Hello and welcome to Let's Play 2 on Marquee Sports Network, proudly presented by Sloan. Last week, the Cubs had more than a few moments you won't want to miss, and we've got you covered with matchups against the Blue Jays, Royals, and our Crosstown rivals. There's a ton of action worth revisiting. You'll see more than a few Cubbies dig deep on defense. Line drive right field, good jump by Suzuki, makes the catch. Line drive caught by Bellinger, throws the third, and it's a double play as well as performers at the plate. Big swing of the bat for the Cubs here in the early going. And he got the fat part of the bat on that ball. On the mound. Swing and a miss, strike three. Perfect pitch on 0-2. Beautiful execution. And so much, Morrell. Can you believe it? Listen to this crowd. Cubs win the ball game. So hey, Chicago, what do you say? Let's Play 2 starts right now. Gansby Swanson started off Sunday's game with this double to drive in a pair of runs. Hit hard, fair ball, inside the line, chalk picked up, corner, in to score, on his heels his hat, and it's a two-run double for Gansby Swanson, and the Cubs jump out front, 2 nothing. Bouncing ball, fair ball, down the left field line, it'll bounce off the sidewall. Corner around 30's coming home. Here comes Happ. He's going to score easily. A two-run double for Dansby Swanson. The Cubs strike first. Two to nothing over the Blue Jays. Quality at bats by the Cub hitters here. Seeing a lot of pitches forcing Rio into the strike zone. Trying to get that fastball in on his hands. Way to deliver, Dansby. After Dansby drove in two runs, Pat Wisdom came to the plate looking to do the same. But this time, Pat had some pop. Well struck, Marshall back, and that's gone. Home run to center for Patrick Wisdom, and the Cubs get two runs back. It's 8-4. Drill, deep center field, Marshall going back near the wall. He looks up, it's gone. Patrick Wisdom with a two-run home run. He cuts the deficit in half. Gets a little slider right in the middle of the play. He hammers this ball in straightaway center. Just kind of rocks back and leans into one. Wisdom now with 20 home runs and 40 RBIs on the year. J.D., if I told you that that was Patrick Wisdom's first first pitch homer of the year, you would say what? I'm sorry, I did not know that. Pat's big bat strikes again. Kyle Hendricks got the start for the Cubs in Tuesday's game against the White Sox, and he made sure to show his Southside neighbors the heat. Kyle back to work. In there, got him looking. Colas is out on strikes. White Sox don't score, leave a pair of middle of the third. Then in the top of the fifth, Kyle knocked out Luis Robert Jr. for another strikeout. Swing and a miss. Robert is gone, and Hendricks picks up his second strikeout. Nice change up, as you said, Dave, from Kyle and Robert well out in front. That's a cut change up. Starts out in the middle of the plate and ends up away. Second strikeout of the night for Hendricks. Next, Hendricks faced Oscar Colas. Sure did. <laughs> Just beautiful execution. Yeah, the last two change ups were kind of ball out of hand. That one started in a good spot. Got that swing and miss. And in the sixth inning, Hendricks came out to the mound for one more punch out. Swing and a miss, strike three. Hendricks strikes out a pair. Four strikeouts over six innings of work. Kyle Hendricks held it down for sure. Mark Leiter Jr. took over mound duties in the eighth inning on Tuesday against the Southsiders, and he spared no pitch to shut them down. Now, excellent pitch by Leiter, and that's his bread and butter, right? The good fastball with location on either side of the plate, sometimes elevated, and then go to the split. A strikeout to start, but Leiter kept flaming. A bounce collected by Swanson. With two quick outs, Leiter then lit up Yasmani Grandal. Swing and a miss, struck him out, and Leiter comes in and mows him down. One, two, three, go the White Sox. The one, two, swing and a miss, strike three. Grandal is out, so are the White Sox. Mark Leiter Jr. showed the White Sox who owns this town. When Let's Play 2 returns, we'll see a smattering of offense from the Cubbies. A one, a two, a three. Let's Play 2, proudly presented by Sloan, will be right back. Welcome back to Let's Play 2 on Marquee Sports Network, presented by Sloan.
In the fourth inning of Thursday's game against the White Sox, the Cubbies bats ignited for a handful of runs. Up first was Jamer Candelario. That one, and gets past Witt, and out into left center field. He hit it hard, and Witt, leading to his left, couldn't come up with it, and the Cubs are on the board. It's 2-1. When you hit a ball this hard, it does a lot of different things. It might have top spin, it might be tumbling, or it might be a knuckleball that literally just fooled the shortstop Bobby Witt Jr. It looked like he had set himself where he thought the ball was going to come. It might have had that reverse spin. It might have been a knuckleball that kicked past him, but a huge opportunity there. Then Christopher Morrell came to the plate. That's the third. Duffy steps on the bag, throw to first, and it gets away. So a run comes in. We're tied up at two. And down to third goes Wisdom. We got another error on the third baseman here. Duffy gets on it. Look at he had a little trouble grabbing the grip. He in act. He actually got past third base. He wanted to get rid of that throw a lot quicker than that. Had to regrip it. Gets down the line. Throws it away. Nico Horner then stepped to the dish to get the third RBI of the inning. On the ground up the middle. Base hit. And the Cubs have the lead. Wisdom comes in to score. And racing for third is Morrell. Nico Horner RBI single. He's done it throughout his career. He did it in high school. He did it in college. He did it at the minor league level, and he continues doing it here. Look at him pulling those hands inside, able to get the barrel to it. Bobby Wood, even with his great range, not able to come up with it. Way to go, Cubbies. Keep on racking up those runs. Fans got a special guest appearance during Wednesday night's North-South matchup when Hall of Fame inductee Ryan Sandberg stopped by to sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Hey, Cubs and Sox fans, let's sing together for our great city, Chicago. A one, a two, a three. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. I need some peanuts and cracker jacks. I don't care if I ever get back for its root. Root, root for the Cubbies. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three, six, six. at the old ball game. Let's go, Cubbies! Rhino's got a set of pipes on him. Cubs was trailing 1-0 in the first inning, but you can always count on Ian Happ to turn the tides of the game when he enters the batter's box. In the air, right field, pretty well struck. That one back, and go! He just curled it over the basket. And here's a fly ball to deep right field. Back goes Colas at the wall. It's gone. Two-run homer, Ian Happ. Cubs lead 2-1. Big swing of the bat for the Cubs here in the early going. It looked like a little slider that doesn't really slide. It kind of spins going up there. And Ian drops the head of the bat on this pitch. The pitch is down in the zone. And the Cubs have a 2-1 lead for half number 14. A two-run homer to take the lead early. Ian always makes it happen. Seiya Suzuki came to bat when the Cubs were down one run in the fourth inning against the White Sox. And I think you might know what happens next. This ball's going to leave the yard. Home run for Suzuki. Ball game tied 3-3. A line smash. And he got the fat part of the bat on that ball. And it jumped out of here. His 11th home run. It ties the ball game at three. And his 41st run batted in. And the ball just kind of floats. Up about thigh high. Suzuki, great extension on that pitch, inner half, and about halfway up the bleachers and left, that ball ends up. Great swing by Seiya. We know Seiya has been more than solid with his bat, but how is he with his glove? Seiya Suzuki manned right field in Tuesday's game against the Southsiders and provided another defensive feat for his highlight reel. Line drive right field, good jump by Suzuki, makes the catch and fires it in. Heck of a play by Seiya in right. 
Yeah, right on time, right on cue. Talking about his defense, much improved this year. The jump is a lot better. The decision making has been really good. Excellent jump, great route on this ball by Suzuki. It's slicing away from him, and if it gets past him, it's big trouble for the Cubs. It'd be a triple and an RBI, but he comes in and makes a very nice play. Saya, you can cover Wrigley's outfield anytime. Javier Assad faced off against the White Sox on Wednesday and had a solid day on the mound. Swing and a miss, and Assad able to get Vaughn. The 2-2. Swing and a miss. Beautiful curveball by Assad. The sheets looped in a shallow right. Coming in, Suzuki makes the running catch. One, two, three, Javier Assad. Two perfect innings for him. After a strikeout of Tim Anderson. 2-2 two -two from Assad. Swing and a miss, and that one in the dirt. Barnhart puts the tag on him. Yeah, very good breaking ball after some fastballs inside. He'd get out of the fourth inning with the double play we just saw. Bellinger back to third, double play! Assad let up a few runs during his start, but capped off his day with a pair of Ks. Outside corner, Andrews didn't like the call from Jordan Baker. Good movement on this two-seam fastball, trying to pick away that outside corner. Tucker Barnhart is really good at framing pitches. Oscar Colas at the plate, he swings and misses strike three. That nice pitching performance from Javier Assad was strong enough as the Cubbies eventually got the W after a few more memorable moments. When Let's Play 2 returns, we'll see some delightful defense. Candelario, nice play. Ranging to his left. Let's Play 2, proudly presented by Sloan. We'll be back soon. Welcome back to Let's Play 2 on Marquee Sports Network, presented by Sloan. In the fifth inning of Wednesday's game, Chamber Candelario jumped towards a line drive for a nice snag. Line drive caught by Candelario roaming to his left, kind of a sliding grab of the line drive. Nice play by the Cubs third baseman. It's an outstanding jump right here. Look at how alert he is. Look at him leaping. Ranges to his left about three good steps, lays out, and makes a nice kind of a sliding catch on that line drive to get the second out. Later in the game, Wisdom went vertical. Cubs trail by a run bouncer. Leaping stop by Wisdom on one hop. Takes it to the bag. Three unassisted. Very nice play by Patrick Wisdom. He is he's showing the hops and he steals a hit and probably extra bases from Kyle Isbell. Now those were great plays by those two guys, but how about two plays from this next fella? Pitch by Tyone, line towards second, Horner's got it, throws to first, double play! Good play by Nico, grabbed the line drive, quickly threw the ball to Wisdom and they double up the runner to end the inning. Dion fired. Ground ball right side sliding play. Horner himself throws him out. Nico Horner with a fine play right there. Sliding, making the stop on the grass, gets up and throws to first. Beautiful play by Horner. The Cubbies sure have the infield locked down defensively. Nico Horner has been unstoppable this season, entering the game on Tuesday with 29 stolen bases. He wanted one more against his fellow Chicagoans. For Nico Horner, stolen base number 30. Now, Nico, a pretty good jump and a little two seam fastball running away from Hap. So this pitch is down and away. Grandall tries to get rid of it in a hurry, but drops the ball with Nico taking off. 30 stolen bases. He has really slid into a big offensive role this season. Wednesday night, while facing the White Sox, Cody Bellinger flashed some leather against his Chicago brothers. The stretch in the 3 2 pitch. Line drive caught by Bellinger, throws to third, and it's a double play. A double play. Robert took off too soon, not really sure what he was thinking. Bellinger made a routine catch, fired the ball across the diamond, and Robert gets doubled up. Big play by the Cub defense. Leave it to Cody to get the job done with his slick defensive precision. When Drew Smiley took the mound in Wednesday's game, he'd make sure to leave the Cubs fans with a smile on their face. Swing and a miss. Sheets is out on strikes. One away, ninth inning. Smiley's 1-2. Swing and a miss. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Smiley. Not a single White Sox batter has put the ball in play 
spanning the last seven men to come to the plate. Lining one down the left field line, base hit over toward the line is half. Elvis is going for two, the throw to second base. The tag, he's out at second base. Pitching like that is always worth smiling about, right? Justin Steele took to the mound in Saturday's game, intent on delivering a strong performance against the Royals. Strike three, breaking ball got him. After getting through the first, scoreless, he'd let up a run in the second before riding the ship, and in the fourth, he'd strike out three Royals. He went, yes he did, strike three. Chad Whitson, the first base umpire, made that call. He just kept on throwing low inside cutters and sliders and finally strikes out for me and after a good battle. Breaking ball, strike three, call. Beautiful pitch by Justin Steele. He gave up the leadoff double and then struck out three in a row. Steele would wrap up his day with his final strikeout in the sixth inning. Duffy didn't like the call. It's a strikeout for Steele. For Steele, that was his 14th win of the year, tied for the most in the majors. Cody Bellinger can belt baseballs a long way, and on Saturday, he did just that. 2-2 hit in the air, left field. Taylor back, back some more, out of here! A belly bomb into the bleachers, and it is 2-0 Cubs! It's got a chance! Gone! Cody Bellinger with an opposite field two-run home run. While one home run is nice, how about a pair of power swings? Bellinger in the air, left center field. He's done it again! Another belly bomb! Second of the day, and it's 4-1. Belly bombs are always a blast. When Let's Play 2 returns, we'll feature the top moments of the past week. So don't go anywhere. That ball is gone! A game-winning home run for Chris Burrell! Let's Play 2, proudly presented by Sloan. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back to Let's Play 2 on Marquee Sports Network, presented by Sloan. Nick Madrigal nabbed his first home run of the season at the end of June. And on Wednesday, he chose to follow up on that during a clutch at bat. Madrigal hits it in the air left field. That one back, back some more. Go! Just dropped it into the basket. Nick Madrigal off the bench and over the wall. And the Cubs are on the board. You get the ball up in the air with the wind blowing out like this. You just got to hit it hard and up in the air. This is a little two-seed fastball down, and Madrigal gets the barrel on it. Better than he had a beat on this ball the whole way. He's going back. Continues to go back and then hits the ivy and runs out of room and the ball lands in the basket for the Cubs' first run. Second home run of the season in a pinch hit situation. Nick Madrigal sure knows how to make his presence known. Michael Fulmer entered the game on Wednesday with the bases loaded and no outs. This was a messy situation for any reliever to walk into. But Fulmer was more than up to the task. Well, a great pitch by Fulmer. That's the slider off the plate away by about three or four inches. Perfect pitch on 0 2. After Luis Robert Jr. walked back to the dugout, Yon Moncada did the same. Oh, see you later. But this slider, Barnhart flashed above up high, deking that he was calling for a high fastball. They go with the slider. Moncada just can't pull the trigger. This one cuts right through the heart of the zone. Two batters down, he then faced Andrew Vaughn. Got him. He punches out Robert, Moncada, and Vaughn after coming into a bases loaded, no out jam. Fulmer, nasty. Michael Fulmer escaped the jam and struck out all three batters on 11 pitches, which helped lead to the miraculous finish of Wednesday's game. With the Cubs down 3 to 1 in the bottom of the ninth, it seemed like they needed a miracle to win the game. And Christopher Morrell had just the solution. Swinging a drive toward right center. Back goes Robert. Back near the stands. That ball is gone. A game-winning home run for Chris Morrell. Can you 
don't believe it. Listen to this crowd. Come Sox Series, you just never know. Morrell with an opposite field, three-run bomb, game winner. Le pone el bate, lo manda volando al jardín central. Se fue. Home run, Christopher Morel, lo botó. Y los Cubs ganan el partido. Morel se quita la camisa, empieza a brincar en la bonita llegando al plato. Los Chicago Cubs dejan sobre el terreno de juego a los White Sox de Chicago. Morel, Waka, Morel, la ganó, los Chicago Cubs 4, los White Sox 3, que manera de ganar el partido, wow. He has taken his shirt off, he is being congratulated, bear hug. What does jubilation look like? Well, he's not wearing a shirt, tell you that much. <laughs> After the festivities cooled down slightly and Christopher got his jersey back, Taylor McGregor spoke to Wednesday's hero after his huge hit. What's going through your mind right now? Thank you, God. And God's win. Go win. Oh, my God. You're always an emotional guy, but running the bases, I've never seen you like that. you describe the moment running around the bases? <laughs> running around the bases, what was going through your mind? Everything. I may get home run but win. In my first time here in the weekly, I want to say God first. Thank you for the fans. They gave me that energy for supporting me and believing myself. Everybody here got uh, all the talent, and I believe the fans, they give everything for us. We go to give everything for him. Enjoy the moment. Thanks, guys. That's all we have for the show. We'll see you next week.